Yeah, like we said earlier, I will show you the behavior of our grid forming control in a grid split scenario. With this convenient and easy to use power hardware in the loop concept provided by Opel RT in cooperation with Lukas Müller, we could easily prove the potential of the developed concepts and validate their applicability, taking into account typical communication interfaces with their possible latencies as well as inevitable parameter and measurement inaccuracies. First, let us talk about the theoretical background. Among other, a simplified method for, for the description of the synchronous generator behavior is the swing equation. It shows the correlation between acceleration, acceleration or deceleration of the rotor and the power delivered by the prime mover or consumed by the electrical grid. For a power equilibrium, the rotor will not change its actual frequency. The rotor will be slowed down when the electrical loads will be increased with a static power in feed from the prime mover. But ju this just tells us whether the frequency will change or not. Without any additional value, it will not give us a specific frequency. This will be done by the droop curve. The droop curve is part of the primary control. Without secondary and tertiary control, it will give us a resulting frequency. Let us look at the power plant with 800 megawatts of nominal power. In normal operation, its prime mover will provide the needed power with a nominal frequency at 50 Hz. When the frequency drops, it provides more power. Vice versa, when there is more power needed, it leads to a lower frequency. To summarize, power deviations will lead to grid frequency deviations, and grid frequency deviations will lead to an adjustment of the power in feed from the prime mover. In the end, there will be a stationary grid frequency, but it will not be the nominal frequency without any additional control forms. So, why do we need this? In the demonstration that follows, we will look at the grid splitting scenario. In nearly most of the cases, the active power balance of the remaining grid sections are not balanced due to the active power flow of the coupling lines that are switched off. So, we will see frequency deviations. We will look at this process and diagrams in a moment. The test grid consists of a simulated part with loads, transmission lines and a wind turbine. The real power hardware in the loop test bench consists of a real synchronous machine and a resistive load. The wind turbine, which is simulated, is controlled by a grid forming control structure named DVC. The real synchronous generator is set up as a constant power feeder with low inertia. At the beginning, we have a power flow of about 50 megawatts from our wind turbine to the other part of the simulated grid. In addition to our 50, for about 450 watt ohmic load of our test bench. Of course, the ohmic load will be scaled up, so the simulated grid will see about 150 megawatts of load. Then we will increase the power in feed from the, uh, from the real generator, which will decrease the simulative load. After we split the system in, with the breaker in position B, we will force our wind turbine to synchronize our test bench with the simulated generator and we can connect both grids again. So let's activate the simulation and start the amplifier. We have to set up our DC sources. We will set up them with 500 volts and let's say five ampere in bi-directional ways. Okay, now we have to activate them. And now we activate the outputs. In the meanwhile, our simulations are already running, so we can see here some, some actual values from the simulated wind turbine, from the simulated synchronous machine, and from our absolute amplifier. The, the power and reactive power and some values for the frequency and voltage. So now let's activate the output. So 
So, as you can see now, here the actual voltage is displayed and the measured current. So you can see we have a current and in our resistive load here, you see an actual uh, power of, let's say, 450 watts. And as I said, the real power will be scaled up so that the simulative grid see around 158 megawatts. As you can see, the frequency is about 49.7 hertz since the primary control of the simulated generator is active. Now, let us increase the power in feed from the real synchronous generator. Since the generated load is increased, the simulated load will be decreased. So, the frequency will rise due to the mentioned P PF droop curve. Now, let us split the grid in two independent systems. As you remember from the grid topology, we had a power flow from our simulated wind turbine to the rest of the simulated grid. Since this is not possible anymore, the, simul the simulated synchronous generator has to provide all the loads in this remaining grid network by its own. As the load increases, the frequency will decrease until it found a stable operation point within the droop curve. On the other hand, the wind turbine doesn't have to provide the power anymore for the simulated grid, so the frequency will rise. In this case here, the wind turbine has a grid forming control visible in the spikes right at the split moment. There are angular steps, thus frequency deviations, which re result in adjustment of the sudden changed grid impedance. With grid following control, the frequency either would not be catched, so the system becomes unstable, or the absolute frequency deviation would rise much higher. To connect both grids again, we have to synchronize them. Since we can control our wind turbine in a more general way than the synchronous machine, we will force it to achieve the same frequency and an acceptable angle between these two grids. Okay, let's force the wind turbine to synchronize with the simulated synchronous machine. We are now able to connect the grids. Since we were forcing the wind turbine to reach the simulated synchronous machine's grid frequency, then its designated operation point on its droop curve, it will result in a clearing process. Here, both primary controls will achieve an equilibrium so that the pre-split frequency is achieved again. You saw, with this fill setup, it is easy for us to demonstrate important systems reaction or modeling complex systems which will be driven by our real power hardware.